Hi guys and welcome to this is my video on using matrices to model road and communication networks. Oh, part of the general maths unit one and two course in year 11, but actually a precursor to the stuff that's coming up. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Thanks very much for joining me. Hopefully you are doing it without dress. Uh, and I don't know, want to know if you're wearing a dress or not. Um, look, do me a favor. Can you subscribe to my social media? Um, by that I mean uh, YouTube. Yes, I'm one of those old school YouTube users. Facebook, TikTok, they're all on there. By following me on at least one of those, it just lets me know that people are generally watching this stuff and I'm not sitting in here talking to myself wondering why I'm doing this. All right, so subscribing means the world for me. Now what I do is uh, tend to start with the learning objective so that we know why at the end of the video what we should be able to do. Be able to summarize relationships in a network in a matrix. Be able to summarize relationships in a network using a matrix. Be able to represent a social network in a communication matrix. Now, this is brand new stuff. I don't think we've done this any other time in maths before this particular course. All right. Now, we've looked at matrices in previous lessons and how they can be subtracted and raised to powers and multiplied by each other and scalars. That is going to help us a little bit in this video coming up now. And we've been told that basically we can use matrices to help us find solutions to simultaneous equations. But how are they used in real world situations? Hmm, well this thing here is a telephone. Yes, I know, old school, that's what I used to have to do to dial numbers. Uh, the hilarious YouTube videos out there of people your age probably being given one of these things and say, right, make a call. Uh, people have got no idea how to do it. But anyway, the way we tend to use matrices is to describe communication networks, road networks, and all sorts of stuff. This is massive in year 12. Now, what is a network? Uh, probably, if you're watching this, you're connected to a network through the internet. An internet is just a way of connecting people or things. And we can use cables and roads and wireless signals and all sorts of ways to connect. Yes, even funny enough, just talking to someone, I have made a connection. So you could argue that uh, the, the air molecules vibrating between us is a connection. And all of these connections can be shown using matrices. So here's an example. Let's just say I live in a very, very small island. And I've got A, B, and C, three towns. Now, there's not a huge uh, road network, <laughs> but we can say that A connects to B, and B connects to C, and B connects to C. Now, we can actually show those connections using a matrix. All right, And again, this is a bit of an uh, easy one. So the first thing I do is I'm going to write A, B, C along the top, and A, B, C down the side. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because we're trying to work out which towns are connected to which other towns. So where they cross is very important. So this point here in my matrix is, is there a connection between A and A? Now, in that situation, I'm going to say no, because if there were, we'd have what's called a loop, right? Can I go to A from A without passing through any other place? Well, no, you may turn and say, won't go to B and back. No, what we're saying is, is there a loop, an A to A connection? So because I can't go A to A directly, there is no connections, zero. The next point here, this one here is, is there a connection between B and A? And if there are, how many ways are there of me getting from B to A? Well, if we look at my diagram, from B to A, there's only one road. So I would put a one in there. What about C to A? Can I go directly from C to A without passing through anyone else? Nope. So there we go. That's going to be a zero. All right, let's look at the next one. There and there. So this is my overlap now with A to B, B to B, and C to B. So A to B, is there any way of going from A to B? There is. There's just one way of going from A to B. What about B to B? Can I go to B, from B, to B, following a road, but not going through anywhere else? Nope. Because again, for that to happen, I'd need to have some sort of a loop. There isn't. What about C to B? Oh, hold on. Excitement. I can go that road or I can go that road. So in which case, there are two connections. And then the last one, what have we got here? A to C. So A to C. Nope. B to C would be my next one. There would be two. And what about C to C? Again, zero, because there isn't a loop. I can't go from C back to C without passing through any other. And what do we notice? We've got a matrix. And even more importantly, is if I draw a line through here, hopefully what you notice is 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 2. In fact, this matrix is symmetric. All right? The reason being is, if I've got two connections between C and B that way, 
I must have two connections between B and C. They're just reversing the letters. So hopefully, whenever we create these things, we can see that they are also symmetrical. Now there are communication matrices as well, all right? So not just networks, we can communicate to people. And here we've got an example. I've got four people. I've got Vicky, Kathy, Stephen, and Paul. And the arrows that point between them are the connections, right? The ways that, the, that these people can actually talk. So in that situation, Vicky and Stephen can talk to each other. Vicky and Kathy can both talk to each other in both directions. It's not just so that Vicky can talk to Kathy, it's that Kathy can talk to Vicky as well. And you're gonna say, well, what situation might there be where they won't? Languages, for example. We can see that Kathy and Paul can talk together. Stephen and Paul can talk together. Kathy and Stephen can talk together. But Vicky can't actually talk to Paul. So if Vicky was going to talk to Paul, say Vicky wanted to spit, uh, talk to Paul, she can't. She'd actually have to send a message through Stephen. Or she could send it through Kathy. Okay? So understanding how this is is really important. But we notice that Stephen is the only one that can talk to all three people. Okay. Can we express that in some sort of a matrix? Hmm, I reckon we possibly could. So let's actually have a look and see whether we can put this into a matrix. So we'd have Vicky, Stephen, Paul, Kathy. Vicky, Stephen, Paul, and Kathy. And what you tend to notice is there's no order to which I've put those in, to be perfectly honest with you. But if I go VSPK that way, I'm probably going to go VSPK uh, PK that way. So let's go. Let's try and do this a little bit quicker. Can Vicky talk to Vicky? No, that's silly. All right. So there's no point Vicky talking to Vicky. Can uh, Vicky talk to Stephen? Yes. Can uh, Vicky talk to Paul? Nope. Can Vicky talk to Kathy? Yes. And by that, what I'm saying is, because this is a Vicky row, can Vicky talk to Vicky? No. Can Vicky talk to Stephen? Can Paul talk to Vicky? Uh, sorry, can Stephen talk to Vicky? Can Paul talk to Vicky? And can Kathy talk to Vicky? Let's do the next line. So we've got Stephen. Can Vicky talk to Stephen? Yes. Can Stephen talk to Stephen? No. Can Paul talk to Stephen? Yes. Can Kathy talk to Stephen? Yes. So in fact, we already knew there that Stephen could talk to everyone, basically not himself. Let's go to my next row here. Paul. Can Vicky talk to Paul? Nope. Can Stephen talk to Paul? Yes. Can Paul talk to Paul? Nope. Because right, that doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Can Kathy talk to Paul? Yes. Now I'm just going to rub this out. I always do this. I try and draw these things and never give myself enough room. And then we've got the last one here. That's to Kathy. Can Vicky talk to Kathy? Yes. Can Stephen talk to Kathy? Yes. Can Paul talk to Kathy? Yes. And can Kathy talk to Kathy? No. Now, again, what I'm going to do is just check that it is symmetrical, right? So I've obviously got this line through here. So 1, 1, yep. 0, 0, yep. 1, 1, 1, 1, yes. 1, 1, yep. 1, 1. So chances are I haven't made a mistake here. But there we go. Now, that is, believe it or not, called a one-step communication matrix, right? And in that situation, we're going to call it M. Now, what it means is a one-step communication matrix is I can have one person talk directly to one other person, all right? So in that situation, Stephen can talk directly to Vicky. Stephen can talk directly to Paul. Kathy, directly to Stephen as well. But there are such things as two-step communication matrices. Now, what that means is I can pass messages, all right? So I'm working through someone else. I'm taking two steps to get. So Stephen to Vicky would be one step. Vicky to Kathy would be another step. So Stephen can pass a message to Kathy via Vicky using two steps. One, two. Stephen can also talk to Kathy via Paul. Stephen to Paul. So here we can say, Vicky can talk to Paul through Stephen. So Vicky can talk to Paul through Stephen, or Vicky can talk to Paul through Kathy. And notice the way they're written. It's written with the arrows, the Vicky, then the arrow, then Stephen, then arrow, then Paul. These are two-step communication matrices, which we can actually describe in a matrix as well. So let's worry about what it's called in a moment. So what have we got here? Vicky, Stephen, Kathy, Paul. Vicky, Stephen, Kathy, and Paul. All right, can Vicky talk to Vicky? And you're going to go, no. And I'm going to say, oh, yes, she can. Because Vicky can talk to Vicky by a two-step by going to Stephen 
and Stephen giving a note back. Huh? Believe it or not, and it makes no sense in a practical situation that Vicky would hand a note to Stephen for herself, but I can get from Vicky back to Vicky. So once to Stephen, and then once back to Vicky. So how are there many other ways are there we going from Vicky to Vicky? Well, I can go from Kaki, uh, Vicky to Kathy, and then back again. So in this situation, that's actually going to be a two, because there are two ways of going from Vicky back to Vicky. All right, what about Stephen to Vicky? Stephen to Vicky. All right, I go Stephen to Kathy to Vicky. Is there any other way of doing it? Nope, there is only one. There's only one two-step way to go from Stephen to Vicky. So that there is going to be a one. What about Kathy to Vicky? All right, so Kathy to Vicky again. So Kathy to Vicky. Kathy can go through Stephen to Vicky, but no other way. She can't go through Paul to Vicky. So that one would also be a one. What about Paul to Vicky? How many ways are there of Paul to Vicky? Well, basically, we've already worked it out here, right? Although it says Vicky to Stephen to Paul, we can reverse it, go Paul to Vicky to Stephen, uh, sorry, Paul to Stephen to Vicky. And so in that situation, there would be two. Now, actually, we can continue working through this. And I would actually recommend you doing that so you understand A, where you make mistakes and B, but actually there is another way of doing this. And two-step matrices actually are N squared. Hmm, hold on a moment. We've seen that before, haven't we? N squared. Well, let's go back to our original thing here. So if you remember from a previous part, that there was my one-step communication matrix. And you've noticed again, that those diagonals there are zero. So what I'm now gonna do is see what happens when I put this into my calculator and square it. Hmm. Knowing full well that I already know the answer, but let's create a matrix. What have we got here? We've got to have a four by four. Hit enter. I know you can't see the actual matrix at the moment, but I can. And there we go. So there is my communication matrix. What I'm gonna do, just in case I need to use it again later, is I'm actually going to store it. He says doing that again. Let's put that one there, if you will. Let's store that in N. All right, and now I'm going to do N squared. Oh my goodness. If I go back to my original matrix, 2, 1, 1, 2, that first row there actually matches up. What is this 3? What on earth is that 3 there? So what I'm going to do is just copy this out really quickly. So 1, three, two, one, one, two, three, one, and two, one, one, two. All right, just so I can turn my calculator off. So what on earth is this three? All right, so that's Stephen to Stephen, that there are three ways of Stephen sending a message to himself. Well, of course, you can go Stephen to Vicky and back again, Stephen to Kathy and back again, and Stephen to Paul and back again. So again, understanding what each of these values here means is really, really important. And you can actually have three-step communication matrices and whatever else, but for the moment, let's just leave it at two steps. Okay, so let's look at an example. The diagram shows the communication matrix with a group of friends in this diagram. Obviously, this is the one I've already been working through, so it should be nice and easy to do. Use a matrix N to record the presence or absence of direct communication links between the people in the network. All right, use the first letter of each name of the label for rows and columns. We've done this in a previous part of the video. Why is the matrix symmetric? That was the question I wanted to look at and I sort of answered it earlier. Why is it symmetric? Because the number of ways there are for Stephen to connect to Vicky is identical for the number of ways for Vicky to connect to Stephen. All right, so the reason it's symmetrical is because the connections must be the same, whether they're from Vicky to Stephen or Stephen to Vicky. That's useful to know. What information is given by the sum of column K? Oh, okay, well, let's go back. So here is my column K. If I was to add all of those together, I would get three. What would the significance be of that three? Well, remember that one, 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 each of those ones mean there's a different person talking to Kathy. And so in that situation, that so the relevance of that would say that there are three people who can communicate to Kathy. Oh, we like that. N squared gives the number of two-step communications between people, namely how many, pe how many ways one person can, can communicate with someone via another person. Find the matrix N squared. We already did that. Use it to find the number of two-step ways 
Kathy can communicate with Stephen. So the two step ways that Kathy can communicate with Stephen, you're looking for the overlap, and in that situation, I'd give my answer as two. In the n squared matrix, there is a three where S meets S. This indicates that there are three two-step communications which Stephen can have with himself. Explain how this can be given a sensible interpretation. Basically, it just means Stephen can talk to Vicky and back to himself. Stephen can send a note to himself via Kathy, and Stephen can send a note to himself via Paul. Random, but there you go. And believe it or not, that's the end of this video. Now, that's just an introduction. It's a good idea to go away and practice that stuff because, as I say all the time, practice really does make perfect. And it also will crystallize your understanding of those. They, they are quite important in year 12. But I'm done with this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you again in another video. If not, please take care and stay safe.